A good Saturday morning. I am Chief Meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth with WKRG News 5. We're going to have a tropical weather discussion, talk a little bit more this morning and in greater detail about the current state of play regarding this area of disturbed weather expected to develop in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico and what our general thinking is regarding how this will or could unfold as we move you into next week. Uh, before we begin this, I just want to say this weekend is uh, not going to be impacted by anything tropical. So enjoy your weekend, get outside and enjoy what will be a warm but dry start to autumn. But let's go ahead and focus in on what's happening right now. This is the visible satellite imagery from this morning. And as the sun rises, you start to see the clouds reveal themselves. And the area I want you to focus on here is Central America. You see Managua, Nicaragua there. We've got Honduras and then, of course, the other South American countries. But I want you to notice the kind of broad spin that is starting to take shape over this area. Uh, term that you're probably going to hear a lot of over the next couple days is Central American Gyre. This is a trough, a large axis of low pressure, and this is a feature that we commonly see uh, around Central America, usually late in the spring or early in the fall, so in the kind of bookends of our hurricane season. And these features have to be watched very closely as they can tend to uh, lead to some tropical development in some of these more favored areas across the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico. And we're starting to see that, at least in the visible satellite imagery, we're starting to see this sort of broad counterclockwise uh, uh, cyclonic flow starting to develop over Central America. It's going to be a big rainmaker. Now, at the same time, this is the upper level of uh, 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 plots. This is the water vapor imagery. So now we're talking mid and upper atmosphere features and we have a strong ridge of high pressure over uh, northern Mexico stretching into south Texas. That's what's actually keeping the southern plains and southeast fairly warm right now, warmer than normal. But we also have a very deep trough here that is extending along the eastern seaboard down through south Florida and all the way down to Central America. There's also a surface uh, frontal boundary with that. Now with these trough features we take tend to get fairly unsettled weather developing. You get a lot of lift and rising motion in the vicinity. So you have this Central American gyre to the south, this upper level trough to the north, and this will also help to pull this entire gyre to the north. So here's what we expect to happen as this starts to move north. We have that pos uh, approximate position of this larger Again, the counterclockwise flow, this feature over Central America on Sunday. It's going to take a very long, a, quite a long time, a couple of days to work its way north. Now, the big question mark we have with this is where will a surface feature or a stronger, more dominant area of surface low pressure form? Some of our models have been suggesting that it will form in the Caribbean. Others are suggesting that one will not form and it will take a while until it gets perhaps all the way towards the northern Yucatan or uh, southern Gulf of Mexico before it starts to organize. And this is one of the many questions we have regarding how this is all going to unfold over the next week or so. Uh, in the short term, it is going to bring a pretty significant rain threat through all of the Central American countries, Belize, uh, Guatemala, Honduras, all going to be hit with some significant uh, rains as well, not very mountainous terrain. Now we move you into next week. So, assuming that we have a area developing, well, again, which is still making an assumption here, you have an approximate surface low somewhere in the Caribbean, southern Gulf of Mexico. Now we have to pay very close attention to the upper level features because it's the upper level features that will guide the eventual path of this. And again, we have a lot of factors at play as we move you through early or the middle part of next week. Namely, we have an area of high pressure uh, over off the uh, Florida coast in the Bahamas, a stronger ridge that's clockwise flow around that. Now, the big question that we're going to have with this is how strong is that ridge? At the same time, we have a deepening trough moving th uh, through the Great Lakes all the way perhaps down into the Tennessee Valley. And if that trough is very deep, that would tend to pull this system a little bit farther to the north. At the same time, we've also got a little cutoff low developing over northern Mexico and south Texas. What role will that play, if any? So again, three, at least three features here that at this point we do not know the strength of, how strong they will be as this system starts to emerge into the Gulf of Mexico. 
So that is why there is a high degree of uncertainty at this point regarding how this is all going to unfold. A lot of factors that we just don't know at this point. It's not, we're not going to really know much until we see that surface feature, that surface low start to develop and where it becomes most dominant. So that's why the National Hurricane Center now has a very large area of development, of possible development here, stretching from the northwestern Caribbean all the way into the Bay of Campeche and across the south, southern and central Gulf of Mexico. At this point, based off of some of those, uh, those uh, features that we're seeing, we're thinking that a general motion to the north would be a bit more likely at this point. There is still a possibility that something forms here, remains very weak, and goes a little farther west. That is not out of the question, but we still think at this point that upper-level trough will try to pull this system to the north at some point. Again, how quickly that will occur? still up in the air. How strong that trough is, still a little bit up in the air at this point. So that's why, again, even as we're now about a week out from any possible impacts being felt along uh, the Gulf Coast, there still is a large degree of uncertainty with this. So I know a lot of folks want uh, an idea. Are we going to have something coming to our community? And unfortunately, at this time, we just cannot say for sure exactly how strong the, the system will be and exactly where it'll go. One thing that's been very common amongst most of the global models that we've seen is developing something quite large, a large circulation uh, developing here. It could be just a large, big rainmaker uh, moving in, staying relatively weak, or if a stronger surface low develops, and that would mean a stronger tropical storm or hurricane uh, developing in the Gulf of Mexico. So your key takeaways, unfortunately, really haven't changed much in the last 24 hours. Again, the chance of development is rising now, Caribbean and Southern Gulf. Right now, a lot of question marks. Exactly where this surface feature starts to take shape, how strong it will become. Um, again, a couple of different uh, factors are going to come into play to, to, to answer those questions. But if this system does develop, and again, the chances are more likely than not that something, some kind of feature will develop, any impacts to the northern Gulf Coast or the west coast of Florida, possibly as far west as Texas, would be felt late this next week. So we're talking next Friday, perhaps into the following weekend. And so at this point, things that you should be doing and thinking about at this at this point, again, no imminent concerns with this, at least over the next couple of days. And in fact, all the way until maybe Wednesday, once we get beyond uh Wednesday, that's when we're really going to have a much better handle on where this is going. In fact, I would even say early this next week, once we start seeing this thing start coming together, I think we'll have a better handle on it by Monday and, and Tuesday. And so that would give you, you know, several uh, days to uh, potentially get ready for something coming towards the uh, northern or western Gulf Coast or eastern Gulf Coast, rather, uh, by the end of next week. So that's where we stand now with this area of disturbed weather. Again, right now, it's just a big, uh, large um, area in, the, in Central America that will bear watching over the next couple of days, and we certainly will do that for you. We'll bring you updates on air and online on WKRG.com and on our social media pages. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend.